Hello, everyone. How are you today? I'm just going to wait a minute. Hopefully, get this caught up. There's always such a delay. It's very frustrating. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Oh, and I always forget that. Okay. How are you all? My name is Karen, and I am with Karen's Stamping Place, and welcome to my studio. I have a really fun card for you guys today. Um, it's a crayon emboss resist, and you can use either a water brush or a blending brush. And either way, it's kind of fun and different and just another way to use our embossing folders. So I'm going to turn the camera down and I'm going to jump in. Okay. So let me show you the card first. Isn't that cute? I love those little owls. Oh my gosh. Part of celebration. You just, they're a must have right now. Must have them. So let me tell you how you can get them. They're with a $50 purchase. Um, and then you get this for free. So let me show you what we're going to do. And then if you stay tuned to the end, I have a bunch of samples to show you. Okay, I don't like my lighting today. Sorry about that. Okay, so let me show you how to do this first. Okay, here is my brick and mortar embossing folder. It's a 3D embossing folder. And here, you know, is the brick. I'm going to use the side that has the line. And I love that line on it because I can just line my paper up on it and just kind of keep it straight that way. Now I'm going to tell you the best white crayon to use is a Crayola. There truly isn't anything better out there. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot to put my phone on, do not disturb. Oh, so let me see, decline. <laughs> Doesn't it figure, that always happens. Okay, as I was saying, you wanna use a Crayola. Um, the generic ones or the off brands, they don't work as well. I've tried them. Um, so I'm just going to use my granddaughter's. <laughs> I went searching through a cram box. Don't tell her. <laughs> okay. So what you want to do is just rub with that cram. Now you want to keep your paper on that line as best as you can. And I can see it. You may not be able to see it, but I can start seeing that image emerge. Okay. And so we're just going to keep that paper straight. It, it requires a little bit of a rub, but it's not that big of a deal. And I can go in and see where it may not have gotten. I mean, I'm not killing myself to do this. It's just kind of fun what you get afterwards. Okay, so that's the first one. I am going to do a quick second one, though, because I have two ways to show you to use this. And so I should have done this ahead, but I didn't, and that's okay. It doesn't take very long, as you can see. You don't want to overdo it. You want to do just enough to see what's going on. Swap hands real quick. And that way I get a firm grip on the other side and don't let it go anywhere. Okay. All right. So there we have it. I'm going to move that out of the way. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, I would love to answer anything to help you guys out with this. Okay, let's see if you can see it. Oh, I think you can, just a wee bit. Okay. So, all right. So the first one we're going to do is with our Cajun Craze ink. And I'm going to take a water brush. Let's see. If Made as well, I did. I might need a little more ink, so I'm just going to put one drop 
of re-anchor in here, the Cajun craze. But playing with it yesterday, I realized one drop was plenty. But now what you want to do is get your water flowing down in there. And that just takes a second. And the brush, I, I'm using the brush, water brush. Um, I find that that one's the easiest to use. And like I said, I just got to get some water flowing down in there. You want it kind of wet. Now, do you remember, this is not watercolor paper, so you don't want to spend too much time getting it wet. You want to just be able to get it and go, okay? Because if you get it too wet, your paper is going to start um, peeling up on you, and I'm going to put just a drop more water in there, get some more. And you just don't want that. Okay. So there you have that piece done. Now what I like to do with my, it just, it's too wet and sloppy for me. So I just take a little tissue and kind of just wipe that out. And that gets rid of the wetness. Okay. So I'm going to set that aside and then this is going to dry. And if you like, don't like the um, water bubbles up on the, um, <laughs> my granddaughter, up on the white parts, you can just kind of dab it and there it's ready to use. Okay. Um, it looks really cute, has some different kind of texture to it. So now let me show you the other way, okay? So I should have left this open, <laughs> but that's okay. I'm using my blending brush, okay? And you'll see there's not much of a difference, but I don't know. There's just something about using the blending brush that I preferred doing this technique, okay? So I'm just going to keep rubbing and keep getting that color on there. And it's okay if it's darker or lighter in spots. I mean, it actually makes it look like a washed-out wood wall. And I really like that. That's what I'm kind of looking for. And that's why I do like that one as well as this and i might just use that one today since i already created one with should have brought a baby wipe over here this is a messy technique guys okay just remember that okay that's covered so now what we're gonna do is close up our ink and we're gonna grab a tissue very important to grab that tissue to wipe off the ink. Like I said, it's a resist. So see, you want to just rub until you see the white crayon showing through. But it just rubs it off and just gives it such a cool look to it. And so then your Cajun Craze ink has stayed where you want it and it's not um, where the crayon is. So there's the two pieces. I like both, but since I did the crayon, um, I mean the, the um, blending brush on this one, let's go with the watercolored one today. Okay, so I'm done making a mess. <laughs> and so for this, I just have a, Whisper White, no, Basic White, thick cardstock base, sorry. Um, and it's eight and a half by five and a half. Okay. And then I'm also using a five and a fourth by four inch piece of Cajun Craze. And I'm just going to go ahead and adhere this. Okay. Oh, 
it's stuck to my finger. Okay, I kind of really think this one looks really cool. Okay, so that's adhered. And so now we're just going to adhere it to the card base. All right. And I always try to um, start at the top and line it up so that I get it pretty straight. All right. I forgot to um, use my bone folder, but that's okay on this one. All right. So I'm going to set this piece aside while we keep going. All right. Going forward, I use my rectangle stitch streamlets. And I use the fourth one from the middle. So you want two, three, four, and it's the fourth one from the middle. I'm making just a small square here. Now, the next thing I've used, I wanted kind of a big sentiment. So I used the Simply Fabulous stamp set, the Just Saying Hello. I really like that. It really works well with what I'm doing. Okay. So I am going to bring in my foam mat, which I have taken and cut one in half, so I don't have a huge piece when I'm doing small things. I'll tell you, I have lots of foam mats. <laughs> um, I have them for all kinds of different things. I have them cut in half for small images. I have them large for larger images. I just, I love to use them. Okay, so let me get this straight. And we're gonna hold our breath and pray we got it straight. If not, it's no big deal. Oh, good job. Okay, I always like it when that happens. Okay, I'm gonna take my stamp and clean it off on my chamois real quick, just so that Cajun craze doesn't stain it too bad. Okay, I'm a little bit off my finger. Next thing I did is I took this ribbon. It's a dual pack out of the main catalog. I don't remember off the top of my head what it is, but I thought it went really well. And being a masculine card, I don't want to overdo it with the ribbon. So I'm just going to add just a little bit at the, kind of the bottom under the sentiment there. No frills, no bows, just something kind of wonderful. Okay, it just adds to it, you know. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside. Now the next thing's gonna take me a minute or two. We are gonna do the owl. I'm gonna ink him up in our Memento ink. Okay. Give him a stamp. Okay. And then I'm going to color him. I'm going to try not to take too long. And I'll walk you through the colors as I go. So the first color I'm using is dark crumb cake. Sorry if you hear my family. They're not playing. Um, but I do work from home and have an older daughter that lives with me with her five-year-old daughter and I have a good time. Okay, next I'm going to go in with the little crumb cake. It won't take me very long to, what's going to take me the longest is fussy cutting. <laughs> It would have been nice to have some dyes with these owls, but we can't ask for everything, right? I just love them. I always make my markers squeak. I don't know why. Maybe I rub too hard. Just want a little bit more around there. Okay, so next I'm going to just go in with the light. Just go around. So I'm going to go around his eyes. Just, you know, that little trick so that you don't go in the eyes, hopefully. Okay. 
This makes me feel a little better. And this year, one of my goals for 2023 is to learn to color more. Um, watercoloring, not watercoloring. Coloring with my blends is not one of my favorite things, but I'm trying to get better at it. And I know with practice, I will get there. But if you don't see me do a lot of shadowing, you'll know why. <laughs> Thank you, Melissa. I got the squeak going on. Okay. So we're going to go around the body. I'm really just sticking with the same two colors. I'm not going crazy here with a lot of different colors. I have in the past on other ones, but um, I figured this one, this little owl, he can be just kind of cute the way he is. Okay. Just kind of blend that in a little bit there. One of the funny things I do when I color is I stick my tongue out. <laughs> so if I'm talking, I can't stick my tongue out so well. <laughs> okay. Give him just a little bit under the bow here. Just make it look. Okay. There we go. So I'm done with that. So no more squeaking. Yay. Okay, I'm going to do his beak and his feet, and I'm using petal paint to do that. I kind of like the way the petal paint looks as opposed to like an orange color. Um, but he's your bird. You can do whatever you want with him. And I know I could use yellow as well. So, okay, now I'm going to do his bow in smoky slate. His, uh, yeah, his bow tie, which I love him having a bow tie. And then I'm just going to go back over the lines that Stampin' Up! gives us to show shading. Okay. And that just kind of creates a little depth there. Okay. Now for his eyes, I used light Cajun craze. Did y'all see me shaking? For some reason, that's something new. When I color, I shake a little bit. I don't know why. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna fussy cut. Hopefully it won't take me forever. I'm gonna do the best I can to make it go fast. But I do wanna fussy cut him. And then we'll be done with this card and I can show you the other ones that I created. And I can't wait to do that. I do tend to get a little quiet when I fussy cut. Um, it's like coloring. It's just one of those things that I don't know. I don't talk a lot through. <laughs> oh my goodness. So Y'all have to tell me what you think of the owl set. I really, really love the owls. I really think Stampin' Up! needs to have these or something like them in our annual catalog. catalog. <laughs> I can't talk with the pussy Okay. Okay, up at the ear. Go around the ear. <laughs> And remember when you fussy cut, I always have to start, stop it. Always move your paper, don't move your scissors, okay? Because it makes it a cleaner cut and a more round cut than a jagged cut. 
So if you move your paper, it just also makes it so much easier to cut. Almost done with him. And I can breathe a sly, sigh of relief. I go back in and snip off something here in a minute. For right now, I'm just going to finish him up. Cut off all that. Okay. Now it's getting in my way. So do y'all like fussy cutting or do you like die cutting better? <laughs> I, I tell you. But it isn't that bad. And we had to fussy cut everything before die cuts came along, right? Okay. All right. Pretty proud of that. Oh, <laughs> well. Okay. All right. So then we're going to take him and we're going to pop him up on dimensionals. You don't need too many. He's not a huge image. Okay. I'm going to bring my card back in. All right. I'm going to adhere my saying down. Sentiment. I'm just going to put this kind of off in the corner. I really want my bricks to show. We, we did all that work. We want it to show. Oh, my shadows today. I'm so sorry. I turned off the overhead light and now it's getting dark outside. So anyway, no worries. Here's the card. Okay. Isn't that cute? All right, and so this one's done with the ink and the blending, uh, the watercolor brush, and this one's done with the ink and the blending brush. You'll have to let me know which one you like better. Okay, let me show you. I did this one earlier, and this is with the trif, trif, quarter foil, quarter foil. Sorry tile. Isn't that cute? Can't hold it down. Okay. Okay. My camera is being weird. Okay. And so this is with ink. Okay. And this is with the, this is with the watercolor brush. This is with the blending brush. Okay. Then I did this one with the Fern 3D embossing folder. This one is with the watercolor brush. And this one's with the blending brush. And I really love how this one turned out. Kind of looks like the sun is peeking through all these ferns. And lastly, I used the thanks and hello. And I only did it with the blending brushes. I really like how that came out as well. These are really fun cards, guys. Okay. Well, I thank you all so much for joining me today. I had a great time showing you this fun, I think, <laughs> I had to think about the words. I hope you all enjoy it. And if you do, please give me a like and a thumb or a thumbs up. And, um, just let me know in the comments what you think. And if you make one, please let me know. I'd love to see your card and what you did. All right, y'all. Thank you. And I'll see you next Thursday. Bye-bye. Sorry, I have to turn. <laughs>